Lab Namaskar and pick up mic. What is the meaning of Puta Vajana? The meaning of Puta Vajana means the words of the Buddha. The Buddha is the, the enlightenment, the Buddha. And then Vajana means uh, his speech. Mm. So Puta Vajana means uh, the teachings or the words of the Buddha, his original teachings. <coughs> and Puta Vajana uh, mainly consists of two things. Uh, one is the tama or the way to understand uh, everything that is around us, what he taught. Yes. And the second is the discipline or the rules mm. for the monks. In order for Buddhism to be able to pass on from generation to generation, <coughs> the bhikkhus are <coughs> his disciples and through their code of conduct, through their mm -hmm. way of life, they are able to conserve Buddhism his teaching, his way of life. So there has to be a rules for them to, to govern their way of life, kind of, uh, the kind of a discipline for them. So Puttajana mainly consists of uh, Tama and the discipline. <coughs> and has to be the original teachings of, of the Buddha that is, has been passed on from recital, from recitation, mm -hmm. from writing down of the Pali Canon, and through the printing and through the digital mm -hmm. media. How do we adopt Buddha's teachings for our daily life? <coughs> yeah. um, his teachings are actually for everyone and anyone. Uh, you don't actually have to adopt or, or adapt anything. Uh, he, his teachings, are, some of them can be directly used for, for uh, uh, everyday life. Let's say, for example, uh, he said, uh, try not to um, cultivate the ill feeling in your mind. Mm. That means when you have, uh, when you feel angry, when you have uh, resentment, or you feel that you want to uh, do bad things to some people, try to uh, let it go, try not to keep it in your mind. Mm -hmm. So that's one of, one of his teachings. So uh, because uh, his teachings are very profound and there are a lot of, of them, uh, some of them can be uh, applied directly. You can use his teaching for, for your daily life uh, directly. Or how to be mindful of your body for in your daily life. How to know yourself when you're walking, standing, sitting, or, or lying down. The Buddha said try to be mindful of your present moment, not to wander off to all other thoughts. Yeah, that's one of the two examples. <coughs> and uh, what is karma? and how does it influence our life? Uh, karma in uh, according to Puttajana or what the Buddha say is the uh, indeterminate, indeterminate thoughts or your intention. When you intend on doing something, there's karma already. When you want to kill someone, there's karma already. When you want to do good to someone, there's karma already. It's the intention, the intent of doing something that is karma. And that leads you to uh, conduct uh, your body action or your speech action. It's all in the mind, something that is arise in your mind that you want, that you have the intention to do something that is karma. What would be a good way to implement meditation into our daily life? Uh, the Buddha said that if you practice medi meditation as short as a snap of a, fin of a finger, <laughs> like that, very short, uh, he said that is enough, that is, um, it, uh, it's like you are following the teachings of the Buddha already, you are his follower already. So, as many times as uh, you can during a day, and as short as a snap of, of a finger, you can uh, apply meditation on. But if you can do as much as you can, that's good. That's even much better. <coughs> and I would have said that to try to do it, to cultivate meditation three times a day. Like uh, the shopkeepers who are trying to sell their belongings, to try to uh, sell things in their shop, way right into the best uh, potential in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. The Buddha said uh, we should cultivate meditation in the morning, 
in the afternoon and in the evening as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe as short as a, a snap of a finger. <laughs> and um, how can we benefit from meditation? Is this the way for a peaceful inner life, for a successful and happy life? Yes, <coughs> it, it can lead to all the things that you ask it for a peaceful life, a happy life, or to any kind of things that you want in your life. Why? Because <coughs> by meditation you are focusing your mind on one thing, which is your breath, and you're not trying to let your mind wander off to all other thoughts. Mm-hmm. These other thoughts are sometimes uh, negative thoughts, <coughs> like uh, resentment, vengeful thoughts, ill will, all these are negativities in your life. So how to get rid of the negativities in your life is by trying to focus on one thing, which is your breath. <coughs> When you're focusing on your breath, your mind is not wandering off. In a way, you're exercising a self-control. Yes. So it's, that is why uh, the inner, la- inner peace can be developed. You will feel peace because your mind is, uh, is not wandering to other things. And by uh, <coughs> being mindful of your breath as much as you can, you are developing concentration. And this is a very powerful tool for you to, to be focused, mm-hmm. to have a, a, a very uh, happy life because you are focused, you're not wandering off to many things in your life. <coughs> And also it could lead you to attain whatever you want in your life as well. If you make a wish through meditation, so in a way it's it is a kind of a, a, a self-control mm. a restraint that you develop yeah so by meditation you can <coughs> you can uh, the Buddha said you can attain anything you want even to liberation through meditation so can we even change our destiny by meditation yeah uh, first of all there's no destiny uh, there's There's no concept like uh, there's an end point that everyone is going to to reach. Uh-huh. The only destiny that we have is death. Everyone is going to die. Uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe 10 years, maybe next 20 years. That is our destiny. But whatever we're going to become uh, is not destiny according to the Buddha. Uh-huh. Whatever we're going to become and what I- whatever is going to happen in our life in the future, depends on the cause that we create the cause that we create <coughs> so if we create the cause if we if we cause something i mean if we create the causality yes. it could lead to uh, a, a, a better life a better destiny it's like an action reaction what you create in your life now the buddha said to uh, observe the five precepts uh, to uh, develop the purification of your body and your speech so the five precepts are not to kill not to steal not to commit adultery not to lie and not to consume intoxicants these are the causes that could lead to a good destiny if you like the destiny mm. or lead you to whatever uh, you want to achieve in your life it's about creating the causes the cause for you so the, the buddha taught about the um, developing a, a good cause for yourself so there's no uh, no like destiny anything but to change it is the uh, creating a good cause but how can buddhism relieve us from bad feelings um, like grief and anger when it suddenly occurs yeah <coughs> so by meditation you have to understand uh, through meditation you understand how your body and your mind works <coughs> this grief uh, sadness uh, <coughs> unhappiness or uh, all those things are thoughts that are natural elements you somehow felt bad about yourself you feel grief whatever so <coughs> by meditation you understand that how your be- body and your mind works it works in a way that <coughs> the mind or the consciousness Uh, when you meditate, it grabs hold of the breathing in and breathing out. <coughs> He's focusing on this uh, breathing in and breathing out. The air is coming in and, and coming out. But when suddenly the grief occurs, 
what happens is that the process is that the mind is uh, letting go or uh, cease to exist from the breath and mm. it grabs hold of this grief or unhappiness or those resentment that's why you think you feel sad or grief those things suddenly occur it occurs by by the mind is grabbing onto it but by meditation you are trying to end this grief by forcing the mind to focus on your breath is coming in and coming out only. but you also have to understand that this mind or this consciousness is not like a stream that is going uh, focusing here and going there anywhere no the mind or the consciousness is uh, uh, the natural elements <coughs> Mm. that originate and exist quickly by day and by night quickly like an um, electricity yeah. it keeps uh, blinking mm -hmm. it keeps blinking so fast that you think it's a continuous stream so by meditating you understand that, okay you are focusing on your breath and suddenly the grief occurs or the uh, <coughs> sadness occurs mm. the process is that the mind dies away from the breath and it takes birth in the grief and your job is to let go of that <coughs> feeling that grief and coming back to your breath because the mind can only dwell on one uh, natural element when it dwell on the on the breathing the air coming in and coming out it cannot dwell on this grief or this sadness so <coughs> by uh, focusing on your breath you are compensating the grief with the knowing of your breath so but because uh, the mind uh, originate and cease to exist very quickly mm -hmm. and you haven't uh, people haven't practiced enough so it goes away and when you bring it back it keeps going back to the grief again and again and again <coughs> so you have to try to develop this habit of focusing just only on your breath this meditation and this grief will uh, disappear. Your mind will no longer grab on to those grief and sadness. So through time, you you will focus on the breath more and more and more. And that's how meditation develops. So basically, meditation is not something what I do in the morning and in the evening, but something what I can use any time when exactly. I have a bad feeling. Exactly. Yes. <coughs> meditation. <coughs> To, to speak in the, in the broader term, the Buddha said to rest your mind on your body. Your body in this case means the breath also, is mm. the air, or also the lump of your body. When you're walking, when you're standing, when you're touching something, try to rest your mind on your body. Let's say I'm grabbing uh, uh, this book. Maybe when I'm reaching to grab this book, my mind wanders off to yeah. this grief or to this unhappiness. Uh, <coughs> the Buddha said, no, you have to rest your mind on your, on your body. So that's the development of the mindfulness of your body, which the Buddha wants us to do. <coughs> this is called meditation. Mm -hmm. And one more thing is to, when your mind wanders off to any kind of feeling, any kind of thoughts, sadness, grief, happiness, uh, memory, or you think about the future. The Buddha said to let it go, uh, disregard it, discard it, and coming back to, to your brain. It's the way of uh, developing meditation. You don't have to sit only, mm -hmm. you don't have to stand only. Any kind of posture that you are doing during the day, uh, every time, any time. If you focus yourself on your body, on your present moment that you are developing mindfulness already you are following his teaching already <coughs> many people confuse meditating and praying uh, so yes. these are very different things right yes yes praying actually uh, the buddha said uh, is to recite his teaching <coughs> when you recite his teaching it is one of the five ways that enables you to attain liberation. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, the actual goal of uh, reciting or praying. But we mistake praying as something we just speak 
and to to say something and mm-hmm. to then to wish for something. Uh-huh. No, the Buddha said it is not that way. To recite is uh, is to recite his teaching, and by understand his teaching, you are able to uh, understand the world that we are inhabiting in, and to develop the true understanding of the world, and it ultimately allows you to attain liberation. This about recital or prayer, but meditation is to develop the mindfulness of your body. It's also the way to uh, attain liberation as well. Uh, the way towards liberation can be attained from many directions. Mm-hmm. So meditation is one of the way of uh, attaining liberation. Praying is also a way of uh, attaining liberation. So, yes. <coughs> uh, a big question that uh, every culture and every religion has uh, asked itself is what is the purpose of life? What would be the answer of the Buddhism? Right. Uh, the purpose of life, uh, as a human being, the ultimate purpose of a human being is to attain liberation. This, that would be the, the ultimate goal for Buddhists as well. <coughs> so it's coming back to this uh, question again that as a human being, as a human form, we are naturally and gradually uh, moving towards our death and when we die we're going to be born again mm. again and again and again in this system of life and death and we cannot get out of mm. the buddha found a way to end this cycle to uh, he asked us to try to practice to cultivate ourselves to a liberation and that will be the purpose <coughs> of a human being any human being should attain liberation, should attain the end of suffering. Uh, suffering in this case is uh, death, because uh, death is when uh, our life uh, disintegrates. <coughs> we would experience cancer maybe, or we experience disease or illness, and those are uh, unpleasurable, they are displeasure that we have to, <coughs> to face. And we, we feel ill, we don't want to feel ill anymore, we want to be cured. So we want to try to end this suffering by moving ourselves to a uh, liberation. And that will be the purpose of life, yeah, according to Buddhism. What are the main rules of behavior according to Buddhist belief? The main rules of behavior for a lay person mm-hmm. are the five precepts that we should observe one is not to kill second is not to steal third one is not to commit adultery uh, fourth one is not to lie and the last one is not to consume intoxicants these are the rules that uh, any buddhist should observe uh, is one of the qualities that allows us to be able to attain the status of a noble person, one of the two qualities. So in a way, if we conduct our daily, daily life according to these rules, uh, we're going to have a peaceful life, and uh, our life is going to be without obstacles. Things going to be easy. Yes. Are there exceptions, for example, um, to lie, to pre- to do something good in the Toscana. Exceptions? Uh, <coughs> no, uh, a lie is, is a lie. Um, but the Buddha said that uh, when you lie, uh, there are the, consequ- the cons- consequences of these five precepts that you break. If you break these uh, rules um, so much, the consequences the consequence that uh, you will be born in the hell or in the realms of the perishable gods, anything below a uh, human realm, you will be born in those uh, realms. Mm. But if you uh, break these um, rules, maybe not so much, the consequences are different. If you kill, the, the least consequence is to have a short life. If you steal, the least consequence is that you're going to uh, 
your wealth is going to be uh, disrupted you're going to lose your wealth uh, quickly uh, if you break the rules of not to commit adultery the least consequence is that you're going to have a lot of enemies mm -hmm. if you lie the least consequences consequence that uh, your words will have no credit you know there you have no credit in your words and if you consume intoxicants the least consequence is that uh, you'll be um, kind of a paranoid or you'll be not really um, uh, not really righteous a as a person you have those kind of a uh, um, develop those kind of uh, anxiety or whatever these are the least consequence the most consequence you have is that you with, if you break these five rules that you'll be born in the rooms that are below the human being and the Buddha said that if you are born below the human being in as an animal as a ghost in the hell chances the chance that you get to be born again as a human being is very little very difficult very very difficult to be born again as a human being if you are born again as a being below a human a human being so it's very uh, important to try to attain uh, the level of human being as much as you can by observing these five precepts these five precepts allow you to also attain uh, the level of a human being of a human being when you are born again as well is it okay to kill animals for food to stop starving uh, if you yourself kill an animal and to make it as a food for yourself to eat yeah you, you are breaking the, the first rule of, of the five precepts is that you kill mm -hmm. but then uh, there are consequences that you have to, to, to suffer maybe the least consequence you have to, to have a shorter life maybe but if you don't if you don't kill but somebody else kill uh, and then you just walk into a restaurant for example and you mm -hmm. order a meat to eat uh, the Buddha wants us to consider consider it this way uh, that um, whether you get into that restaurant or not there will be a butcher killing anyway so whether you're in or not you're going to disrupt that, per that butcher's uh, job uh, people who are born as a butcher is because of their karma mm -hmm. they, they choose their life I mean, out of their uh, hardship or whatever they have to choose their life as a butcher is one of the profession so in a way they have to suffer the, the consequence but if you um, eat meat it doesn't mean you kill animal you have to differentiate very clearly so you don't have to be a vegetarian you can um, be you can eat meat you can eat vegetarian uh, be a vegetarian it doesn't matter as, you, as long as uh, you don't kill uh, for the monks the Buddha say that if there's the meat that you don't feel uh, that uh, you don't see that it's been killed for you you don't hear that it has been killed for you and you don't feel repulsive that has been it has been killed for you and you, you can eat it because the monks in a way are they are a beggar they, they beg for food to eat so we have we can't have many uh, complaints you have to mm. take whatever is given to you so we just can't have many requirements just whatever that, that is given to us bigger mark i would like to ask one question um, regarding the daily life of a monk yes can you explain a little bit how it is to to be in the monkhood yeah. to live? yes uh, the purpose of the monkhood is to abandon our uh, uh, household life to try to attain liberation that is the goal of the monkhood and to attain liberation we have to conduct ourselves through uh, the Buddha said to alternate between walking and meditating mm -hmm. sitting, walking, meditating after the first meal until the end of the day maybe 10 o'clock in the evening and then after that we sleep and then we wake up again maybe 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and then
then we start uh, cultivating ourselves again mm -hmm. through the alternation of uh, standing, sitting, and walking to try to liberate ourselves from uh, uh, this clinging to attain liberation. To be to be the witness of his teaching. So we abandon almost almost everything in life to live a very subsistence, subsistence life, a very uh, <coughs> uh, a very simple life to to attain uh, liberation. Are there um, differences between uh, the different schools of Buddhism uh, in regarding the monkhood or yes. the rules? Yes, yes. Right now, there are a lot of uh, sects and there are a lot of uh, uh, many teachings. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are, but that's not what the Buddha wanted. The Buddha wanted us to uh, follow his teaching and his uh, the Tama and discipline only. But right now there are many um, ways of Buddhism because there are many disciples and they can somehow proclaim themselves mm. as, a, as, a, as a master, as a teacher. But those people, they forgot who the real teacher is, which is the Buddha. Mm -hmm. So in a way, the monk uh, are somehow trying to uh, uplift themselves as a teacher. But the Buddha said no, the Tathagata or the, the Buddha is the one who found the path, the knower of the path, and the disciples are just the followers. We are supposed to be following his teaching only. Uh, we are not supposed to be inventing anything new. Mm -hmm. So many uh, sects, many types, many uh, uh, ways of Buddhism are inventing many things. But the Buddha said, no, you should, not, uh, you should not invent anything, you should not abolish anything. We are supposed to be following uh, our teacher, which is the Buddha. That's why we have to come back to Buddha Jana, the uh, authentic, the original teachings. Another question from a very different field. Do some people have supernatural powers or abilities? Yes, they can. They can have uh, supernatural powers and abilities. <coughs> but what the Buddha say is a kind of just another kind of knowledge, mm -hmm. just another kind of abilities. Just like some people are doctors, some people are engineers, some people are architects. They have a sp specific knowledge, a specific abilities. Some people can draw, some people can paint. Some people can sculpt, so some people can have uh, supernatural abilities. So it's just another abilities uh, in this world, but it doesn't lead to liberation. The thing, the thing about it is that the Buddha said that uh, there are three types of miracle that that he, he spoke of. One is uh, the miracle of. Um, uh, supernatural power uh, when you can one can become many many can become one and you can walk on water and you can travel throughout the universe and through another realm that's uh, one of the miracles the second one is the the miracle of the telepathy which is the ability to read other people's mind uh, <coughs> to know that this people this person is thinking about this that person is thinking about that these two types of miracles, the Buddha said that uh, he didn't like it, he hated it, he despised it because it doesn't lead to liberation. But there's the third one which is called the miracle of instruction, the miracle of, of, te of teaching that he said that uh, when you tell other people to uh, conduct this way, not to conduct that way, to try to cultivate this and try to abandon that through his teaching. That is the miracle of uh, instruction, which the Buddha ce celebrated. He said that we should uh, focus on the miracle of, of instruction to spread the words of the Buddha. Why? Because it leads to liberation. It comes back to the goal of Buddhism that anything that we do or we encounter or we experience, we have to ask, 
does that lead towards the end of our suffering? If not, we uh, don't have to, uh, we can ignore it. So these uh, supernatural powers or supernatural qualities, they, they, they're just like any other discourse. Does it lead to liberation? It doesn't measure anything uh, in Buddhism. Can fortune tell us actually predict the future? Uh, yes, they can, but uh, it is uncertain. <coughs> uh, the concept of uh, fortune telling is also um, also exists in existed in, in the Buddhist time. People tell uh, people do fortune telling, but uh, it always uncertain. And and the Buddha said that only one, the only one who can predict uh, rightly and uh, correctly without any mistake is the Buddha or anyone who has the abilities as much as the Buddha but no one else can have the abilities as much as the Buddha so all other people who try to do fortune telling yeah they, they can say whatever they want but they are uncertain and it doesn't mean that what they say every time is going to be true uh, so we should be aware that uh, it's just another knowledge another this cause and it's always uncertain and there's nothing for us to try to uh, be afraid of mm. in the future it's all trying it's all about trying to create a good cause for the future yes. Mike uh, talking about being afraid um, <coughs> many people are afraid of ghosts yes. do ghosts exist uh, ghosts uh, you have to understand that there are entities which exist in, in, in other realms. We as human beings are in, inhabiting the realms of, of the physical elements mm -hmm. which are composed of uh, uh, earth element, the fire element, uh, the water element and the air element. These four elements compose of the world that we are inhabiting. The, the structure, the architecture, everything that we are inhabiting in, inhabiting in our composed of these four elements. But the Buddha said that, that, that there are other realms that are existing. existing. The gods are those entities that are attaining the life form that's below the human being. The perishable gods, the realms of the departed, the realms of the animal kingdom, Mm -hmm. So they do exist, but they, they exist in different realms. Like you walk around and you see um, uh, animals, they also ex exist in their own realms. Or you walk around, there are uh, telephone signals or these uh, intangible or un 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 uh, invisible signal. Mm -hmm. They exist, but we don't see them. So ghosts and other uh, uh, entities they exist <coughs> but in different realms so we are just uh, living things living beings <coughs> that are uh, inhabiting different realms yeah. all have the same properties universal properties of life aging something like that <coughs> does uh, merit making help us to achieve our goals and if so what is the best way to make merit Yes, the merit making uh, is very. Uh, the Buddha talked about it uh, in many ways, and yes, uh, you, uh, the merit making can help you achieve what what you want, but it doesn't help you to achieve uh, liberation. Uh, if you do merit making by and then you want something in return let's say you make merit and you say okay i make this merit and i wish i have something back to me because i did good things yeah you <coughs> the buddha said that you will be uh, when you die you'll be a company of the devas but then you'll be born again and the, you will not be able to escape the world of the ghosts the world of the hell and the world of the everything is below us but if you do merit making by just an act of merit making uh, an act of giving 
an act of don- donation uh, with the pure mind that you're uh, trying to get it get rid of the stinginess is with you on there get rid of the uh, uh, something that you try to hold on to try to give away let go of things that is that you belong uh, <coughs> By developing that, you'll be able to attain liberation. The best way to do merit making is to develop meditation. Why? Because when you meditate, your body, your speech, and your mind are purified. You are controlling your body because you try to meditate. You know. You are controlling your speech because you know speaking lies. You are not. Uh, speaking any rubbish you're not trying to cause any conflict with your words and you're also trying to control your mind not to wander off to all those ill feelings so all these three factors are uh, perfectly cultivated very purified but when you're just giving when you let's say you're giving something uh, your mind can still wander off or when you're giving maybe you after giving you go away and then you start drinking and whiskey and you get drunk and then you steal and you lie it's not the, the best way to uh, towards purification so the best way for merit making is to uh, cultivate meditation